morning. So if you get a chance, Google, stop it, and you can watch all six minutes of that video that give you this advice. S-T-O-P-I-T. Now, why did I choose that video? Because a little later in the service, we're going to talk about Philippians 4, 6, which says, do not be anxious. And the words do not be, you know what that means in Greek? Stop it. <laughs> so Paul's like, just stop it. And so we're going to talk about how can we do that? How can we refocus our lives, not focus on worries, not focus on doubts, not focus on fears? It doesn't mean that there's not things you need to take care of. It doesn't mean that there's not things that you need to deal with. But worrying about them just makes your hair like Dave's and mine. And mine. You know, they're going to notice if we try Grecian formula. Because one week we'll come in and people will be like, yeah, I'm just, yeah, it's over. It's over. You give up. It is. So um, I told Kristen, I said, you know, I think it's time for me. I said, you know, for Christmas, I've been Santa. And I think it's time for the desantification process to begin. Uh, anyway, so, uh, so that's a new year, you know, new year, new you, all that stuff. So I don't know. How many of you have ever cut your own firewood? You've cut your own firewood before? Yeah. So last Christmas... Uh, Kyle got me an axe. We have uh, a few oak trees that I've cut down. I'm so excited. I'm, I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. And uh, uh, so he got me an axe. And so some of the wood, man, the axe, I, you know, I sharpen it up and, and I can cut right through pieces of wood. But I had some wood that is not easy to cut. It's horrible. And so I would swing at it and swing at it. I actually at one point got my chainsaw out and cut up some of the wood. It was that bad. And uh, uh, so, because it's hard to dry it out when it's not cut up. So this year, Kyle said, what do you want for Christmas? So last year he got me this. And this year I said, how about a wedge? So I was so excited. So he, he gave me a wedge for Christmas. I came home on Christmas Day, went straight to the wood pile. I was still dressed up. I didn't care. And that's, that's my problem, by the way, is I'm too dressed up sometimes when I do stuff like this morning, when I decided I need to put bleach in our water softener and my new sweater is now hey anyway, anyway so um don't 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 tell Kristen. uh she'll be here next service so but um this wedge so i so i immediately got this big log that i had you could see the hack marks on the top where i tried it and I, I i put the wedge in there and then i turned this around and i hit the wedge about four times and that wood just split beautifully i was so excited i sent a picture to kyle and said it works and, um, and then when I walked inside, Chris was like, what have you been doing? I'm like, splitting wood. It was exciting. And um, so let me tell you something awesome. When you use the right tool, it changes everything. And here's the deal for so many of us. You and I are hacking at life. We're trying to get through it. We are pushing. We are hurting. We are getting burned out. We're exhausted. We're worried about things we cannot control. We, by the way, we really can control very little. I mean, right? And, and, and we're hacking at it and hacking at it. And then all of a sudden God says, why don't you just give it to me? Now, it doesn't mean, resting in him doesn't mean that there's not things to do sometimes. Resting in him doesn't mean you go to a mountain and you just sit and go, okay, God, take care of all my problems. Go to work for me. Uh, uh, make my children behave, right? I mean, we have a part in that. But the truth is when we trust him, he makes life so much better. We can walk through life without fear. We can walk through life without worries. When we get those worries, we can present them to him. And I'm going to give you three keys today to how to deal with our focus and refocusing. Because the truth is, listen, we all lose focus sometimes. Uh, you know, we joke about me being ADD, but the truth is for all of us, we are all ADD. And the more we have these things, the more ADD we become, the less focused we become. We hide in our devices anytime we have an unpleasant emotion and we haven't even looked in the mirror or looked up to see what's going on. When we focus on the wrong things, it ruins our joy. It will ruin. I, I put in my notes that it can ruin, but it will ruin ruin your relationships with others. And we now know scientifically, worry will, will shorten your life. Congratulations, those of you who are worrying. Because people always say, worry doesn't do anything. Yes, it does. It kills you. So you're getting something done, right? 
Today we're going to talk about focusing on thank, being thankful on his power and the big one for all of us, especially those of us who drive like me, his control. I want you to learn a phrase that I learned from a book I read recently and I thought it was such a great thing. It's a very simple prayer and it goes like this. God, I release everything and everyone to you. God, I release everything and everyone to you. Now, that's an easy prayer to pray. And it's a hard prayer to pray with your heart. God, I release everything and everyone to you. So number one, let God's peace lead you to thankfulness. Colossians 3, 15 through 17. And I went New Century Version. By the way, some people ask me, why do you use different versions? Um, one of the reasons I like New Century Version, the NIV is closer to the original uh, there's a version that's even closer to the original, but it's very hard to read because going from Greek to English, there's things missing and we struggle with that. King James is a college reading level, right? So it's, very, it's better for memorization, but it's very difficult to, for some people to even read. The New Century Version, you ready for this? Seventh grade reading level. Do you know where most Americans read? Seventh grade reading level, okay? So New Century Version is good, and it gives us sometimes, those of us who've read NIV or NAS or one of the other versions for years, it sometimes just gives you a little different look uh, at the same words, the exact same words, just maybe presented a little differently. So here we go. Let the peace of Christ, that Christ gives control your thinking because you were all called together in one body to have Peace. So you were called to have peace. Are you living in that? And then it says, always be, what's the next word? Thankful. And, and so in the Greek, this word always be thankful means keep on becoming thankful. So you never arrive at being constantly thankful. So what do we have to do? We have to keep on becoming thankful. By the way, have you ever dealt with an ungrateful person? You ever help somebody or given something to somebody and they don't care, don't appreciate it? Now, I know we're supposed to do everything for Jesus, but there's something about that when you do that that you're like, what? This is what God wants from us, to be thank just be thankful. And then it says, let the teaching of Christ live in you richly. I love that. This is the idea of the teaching you hear from Scripture when you're reading the Bible when you're hearing teaching about the Bible, like on Sundays and Saturdays, and if you listen during the week, those of you who are watching online, it's, it's let that dwell in you, let it live in you richly. Don't, don't, just, don't just throw it out of your mind, but let it live in you. And then it continues, use all wisdom to teach, instruct each other. How? By singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Isn't that awesome? Every once in a while, somebody will come and go, hey, we got to sing some, we got to sing hymns. And I'm like, yeah, we got to sing hymns. But we also have to sing spiritual songs. Every once in a while, somebody will say to me, Eric, those new songs are so repetitive. And I'll say to them, I know the hallelujah chorus just drives me crazy, the repetition in those new songs. What do you mean? Hallelujah chorus is old. No, no, it's not even close to old. 1700s. Man, they've had music since the first century. No, no, I'm talking about the new songs. I don't like that they say the same thing over and over again. I said, I know. It's like Gregorian chants or something. It's like what they used to do. So why do we repeat things? Because we don't listen the first time. Right? And so we have to say it again and again. So here we go. And by the way, this spiritual songs, you ready for this, Dave? You're going to like that. The word charis is there. It means to sing with grace. To sing with grace. So as you're singing, you sing with grace. I, I, you know, part of me is like, you know, when you listen to some people. You need grace to listen to them sing, right? But give grace to yourself when you sing. You don't have to have a great voice. The Bible says, make a joyful noise. Isn't that good news? For some of you, that's all you're going to get. You're going to get joyful noise. All right. With thankfulness in your hearts to God, everything you do or say should be done to obey Jesus your Lord. And all you do, give thanks to God the Father through Jesus. Now, I want to go back to the very beginning of this verse. We're not going to pull it on the screen, but here's what it says. It says, let the peace... That Christ gives control your thinking. Now this is really an interesting thing. It's a, it's a word about the Holy Spirit. And it means to be an umpire. So an umpire is a person who stands behind the plate in baseball, right? And what does the umpire mainly do other than get calls wrong? 
Hopefully my pastor friend Scooter watches this, right? So, so what do they do? They call balls and they call strikes. And they say, that ball was good and that ball wasn't good. Listen, so what does this mean? It says, let, let the peace that Christ gives control your thinking or umpire your thinking. Which means that every thought that comes into your mind is not from God. Some things are from you. Some of, listen, some people are just more negative than others. Have you figured this out yet? There's just some people that are just grumpy. So what do you do? So what do you do? You work on it by doing what? By allowing the umpire to tell you that was a good thought. That wasn't a good thought. And when you find yourself pitching outside the plate all the time, you got to listen to the umpire of peace. He says, is that thought giving you peace? That thought giving you peace or something else? If you're going to let the peace of Christ umpire your thinking, look at what it brings. So think through your thinking. Are you being thankful or are you walking in something that takes away peace? And I will tell you something very, let me give you a very simple exercise about Thanksgiving. It's not part of my message, but sometimes when you're feeling anxious, just sit down and make a list of things you're thankful for. Take a walk and look at what you're thankful for. I can tell you right now, there are people in Nashville, all my friends in Nashville right now, and anywhere near Nashville, do not have internet. That's how spoiled we are. But it's a big deal, right? We're mad when it goes slow. There's people right now who can't call their friends. They can't call their neighbor. They can't check on people. Now, are we thankful for what we do have? Most of the time, only when it's taken away. When your car doesn't start, you're frustrated. But were you thankful when it started? Let God's peace lead you to thankfulness. Number two, refocus on God's power, not your pain. They've done study after study after study that one of the things we're doing is when we have any kind of pain or discomfort, we look down at our phones. We're looking down at our phones hundreds or even thousands of times a day. Why? Because anytime we have discomfort, we try to busy our minds. We busy it through the news. We busy it through sports. We busy it through even worry to get our mind on something that's not, we don't have to deal with something. But we have to refocus on God's power instead of things that make us more anxious. Let the peace of Christ rule your thinking. Remember, God, I release everything and everyone to you. Here's a simple exercise for you from the psalm. Psalms 8, 30, 3 and 4. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and stars which you set in place, what is mankind that you're mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? So what does that mean? Well, I love that this week we had what, what a lot of people called the Christmas star. Right? Because two planets came together. We were all excited about that. I don't know that I'd call that the Christmas star. I don't know how that would lead me to a specific uh, manger without God's help. That's another story for another day. But, but here's the deal. People looked up. People were amazed at what they saw. They stopped looking at their TV and their phones. Now, granted, a lot of people took pictures with their phones. It doesn't come out very good. Okay. But they took time to look up. When's the last time that you've gone outside and just looked up, day or night, just looked around and realized how awesome the universe is? Listen, the enemy does not want you to think about the power of God at all. The enemy's whole goal is to get you to deny that God exists. Even if you're a Christian, to deny him in your life, to deny his power. So how do you get around that? As you go, you look at how awesome the world is. You look at all the things that God has done. Even the, just the, the chemical makeup of things. The physical properties of things. The fact that we have gravity and just the right amount. And the angle of the earth is at just the right tilt. The way the earth spins. I mean, all the things that happen. The fact that ice floats. So the world is not a frozen mass of ice. Even though ice should be denser than water by most people. Properties, that's what happens, right? And yet ice, right before it freezes, expands, pulls in air, oxygen, whatever's around, and it floats so that the water underneath is all protected. Just that one simple, wow, God, that is amazing. 
And if you're stuck at home and you can't get out, hey, you can look at your fingerprints. You can be like a little kid looking in the mirror. I don't know if you did this, a little kid with your flashlight. Watched your pupils dilate. You ever do? You never did that? That's an ADD thing, I guess. <laughs> when you focus on your problems and your worries, you can't help other people. When you get focused on all of your difficulties, you can't be a blessing to somebody else. Worry makes us selfish. So when you're worried, just recognize it for what it is. It's selfishness and self-centeredness. So we pull ourselves out of that what? To praise God for what he's done. To look around at his power. Philippians 4, 6 and 7. Do not be anxious. You know what that word do not be means? Stop it. Stop it. Stop being anxious. And Jesus, of course, in Matthew 6 says something very similar. Don't be anxious about anything. And then about anything. But in Every situation, what do we do with it? By prayer and petition. So that means we pray about stuff, but then we also present it to God, and then it says, with thanksgiving. And thanksgiving is things like, God, you know, I know that regardless of what happens, you're in charge. God, I, I'm glad I can trust you with this thing, with this person, with this situation, with this ugliness, with this issue. When we do that, what happens? It says, by prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. By the way, when you give somebody a present, right, you present it. After they open it, do you grab it and take it back? Only if you're praying, right? How many times have you presented something to God, and then as soon as five minutes later, you're like, yeah, and I got it. And you're worried about it again. Hey, and then present it again. Give it back. Give it back. Quit taking it. Present your request to God, and what will happen? The peace of God, which transcends understanding. So your friends will say, I don't know how you can have peace in the middle of this situation. By the way, peace is not the absence of sadness. As Christians, sometimes some people think you can't be sad and be a Christian. It's not true. You're going to grieve as a Christian. Jesus wept. You will weep. You will struggle. There'll be times. There are people right now, today, that are incredibly sad. They're struggling. Some of you might be here. You may be overwhelmed with grief and sadness, but you can have peace that transcends understanding. And then it says it'll guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. What's interesting now, the things we know, it literally guards your heart. Not just figuratively. Your literal heart is guarded because when you worry, guess what? Your heart doesn't do so well. You start launching all kinds of stuff. By the way, they found out when you're stressed out. Do you know what you want when you're stressed out? I found this out. This is my excuse. I told Kristen this is my excuse. You want McDonald's french fries. You want anything salty when you're stressed out. Did you know that? Because your body's reaction to stress and all the chemicals that begin firing is, I need salt. Oh, and that's so healthy for us, isn't it? So what do we need? The peace of Christ to guard our hearts and your mind, you ever get hyper-focused on something, worried about something, frustrated about something? So what do we need to do? We need to look up. We refocus on God's power. Now, in 2021, I want to tell you the vision that I have and that I want to be for our church this next year. I'm going to give it to you ahead of time. In Mark 10, 21, the beginning of the verse, it says, Jesus looked at him and loved him. So I want... Or we want people to feel seen and loved in 2021. And you can't do that if you're selfish and self-centered. We want people to be seen and feel loved in 2021. We want to look around and notice people. Notice when they're not here. Notice when they're hurting. Pay attention when they need help. Pay attention when they need something. Go out of our way to let people be and know that they are seen and loved. But we can't do that if we're always walking in worry and fear. So let God's peace lead you to thankfulness. Refocus on God's power, not your pain. And then number three, let go of your control and let God be God. Now, I will tell you this. Many of the men I know exert control outwardly. And many of the women I know exert control inwardly and more subtly. Men, we're not subtle. What do we do? We're driving and we say things out loud to other cars that we want to control. We get angry and we blurt things that we wish we hadn't said, right? Because we wanted control. I have ladies in my life who are passive aggressive in those things. 
I have a mom who, who's watching right now who I cannot tell you the time she said to me, oh, is that what you want to do? Or giving me a hint about something. Oh, well, I guess that's one way to do it. Now, this is the most encouraging woman on earth. But sometimes we all want control. We want to get what we want when we want it. And if we're not careful, we ruin relationships with others. Now, let me tell you what happened on Christmas Eve Eve. Seminole County, I knew that they had gotten some vaccines. And so I'd been checking their website. While I was here at church, they released the appointments for vaccines. By the time I got home, every appointment was gone. Somebody else in our family registered their family member in Seminole County, but did not let me know. And I got home and found out I couldn't get my mom a vaccine the first day. That was my plan. Get it as soon as she can, and then she can start to be around people again. And so all night, Christmas Eve, I was frustrated. I'd wake up going, I can't believe I didn't. I can't believe that person didn't tell me. I can't believe that didn't happen. Why didn't I pay attention? What and then I started beating myself up. Why didn't I pay attention? I should have I known. I I've always looked at the news. I just didn't look at the news. I should have been paying attention. And what do you do? You start to just focus on the same thing over and over and over. Why? Because we want control. And finally, I had to say, God, I release everything and everyone to you, including my mom. God, I release everything and everyone to you. I can't fix it. I can't control it. I can't control what people do. I can't control what people say. I can't control what happens with other people. God, I can't even control myself sometimes. You should have seen the bag of potato chips I ate over Christmas, right? Right? Been there? Does any, any of you eat something you wish you hadn't eaten? Anybody, anybody eat something? Glad you ate it. You're glad you ate it, but it was too much. All right, all right. Listen to this. Psalms 105, 5 through 9. Look to yourself. No. Look to the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. By the way, this does not mean seek his hand. Most of the time when we pray, we're seeking God's hand. God, do this for me. God, do this for me. God, do this for me. This is seek his face. What has God done? What are you thankful for? How about God's power? How about his strength? Seek his face always and then remember the wonders he's done. His miracles, his judgments he's pronounced. You servants, the descendants of Abraham, his chosen ones, the children of Jacob. He is the Lord our God. His judgments are in all the earth. He remembers his covenant forever. By the way, we forget our covenant with God all the time, but he remembers the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham. He has not forgotten. And sometimes what we need to do is not only look around, not only be thankful, not only look around, but we need to also take time to recognize that God is God and I am not. <laughs> God, well, you too. Don't just say it by me. Okay. Hey, God is God and I'm not. Because what happens? When we start to think that we're God, we think we can control everything. And I finally had to say, Lord, you know all about the vaccine. You know about what it is. And you can take care of my mom. And Lord, you know what? Eternally, she's taken care of either way. So I'm okay. So God, you, I trust you with all these things. Now, I will tell you this. If you live in Brevard County, you ought to be checking the website. So that as soon as you can get the vaccine, if you want it, you go get it. I'm just saying. When we focus on the wrong things, it ruins our joy. What have you been focused on? Have you taken time to give thanks? I want you to have great relationships to other, with other people, but the only way you can is to be thankful for them. By the way, if you start to focus on people's negative traits, you know what you'll see? Their negative traits. But if you start to say, God, would you help me to see the good? Help me to see the potential. Help me to see what can come out of this. Birth. Lord, help me to give thanks, even for that person that's difficult, even for that child who's a struggle. Lord, I pray, I release everything and everyone, including that person, to you. I release them to you. I'm not going to try to control them. Focus on thankfulness, focus on his power, and focus on his control. And your mind will be renewed and changed this season. God, I release everything and everyone to you. If you're here today or watching online and you've never given your life to Jesus Christ, you can do that today. I'd love to talk to you about what it means to surrender to him. John 3.16 says, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, 
That whoever believes, and that means to put their faith in, that means to trust him. It doesn't just mean to know about him. Whoever believes in him will not perish but have eternal life. We know that this life is now and now, but we believe in eternity. So if something happens to me today on the way home, Eric isn't gone. He's just moved on. And the truth that is, that's the truth for you and for me if we have a relationship with God. So if you don't have that, I'd love to talk to you about what it means to be a Christian. Maybe you're here as a Christian, but the truth is, as I was talking today, you thought of something or someone you're trying to control. Present it to him. Lay it down at his feet and give thanks. Let's pray. Father, thank you for these moments. I thank you for this season. I thank you for your love. I thank you for your protection. Lord, I trust you with everything and everyone. I thank you for them. And Father, in those moments when I try to control things and we try to control things, Father, forgive us. Help us to realize that you are God and we are not. Lord, we thank you for all you've done. Lord, we thank you for taking care of our church. We thank you, Father, for all the folks who came this week. Father, we thank you that we've not had an outbreak in, uh, in our church services. We thank you, Lord, for the people that you've blessed this year, that the people who found their way back home even during this difficult year. Lord, we thank you for the hundreds and hundreds of people who've watched services online this year. And Lord... We thank you for your power in our lives to give us joy, even in a difficult season. So, Lord, thank you for these moments. We release everything and everyone to you right now. In Jesus' name, amen.